Everything matters more than selection at the pointy end of the season on the 360 agenda. The Hawks and Dockers bolster up for a twilight stoush. Jack Gunston on the express return as the Dockers name Michael Walters. A double blow for the Cats. Not only Steve Johnson out, but Jimmy Bartell as well. And the Blues have announced they're out for revenge. And dual premiership swan Lewis Roberts Thompson joins the ranks of the newly retired. Barry Hall shares the secret to a good LRT. We have rotated heavily this week on <laughs> AFL 360. 14 premierships have been through the co-host chair. We've saved the best till last. I'm Jared Waitley. He's Michael Voss. And this Thursday night, it's footy from all angles. Vossy, welcome. Good to be here. On a heavy rotation heavy at the ro moment. Only the very best, though, have come through. <laughs> oh, appreciate that. Thank now, you very much. Uh, I follow you on Twitter. You tweeted yesterday. It was 12 months to the day mm. since your departure from the Lions. And yet you marvelled at the journey that you've gone on. Yes, it's been a difficult journey journey at times. Uh, certainly when you get that initial news, you're not too sure exactly what you're going to be doing, but here I am. Instead of Robbo, I'm looking at the 360 <laughs> sitting on the panel, but that's been a ride. I think that on this night I was sitting down, finished the press conference and uh, planning a trip to New Zealand for a few days by myself. So it goes to show how 12 months can change a lot of things. Has it panned out all right? Because I imagine uh, there's a sense of grief in the aftermath, I'm sure, and then the uncertainty of where you'll find your place in football. You've found a pretty neat place as uh, the host of a top reality show. Yes, yeah, it's been different. I never thought that as a 17-year-old I'd be sitting as a coach as a reality TV <laughs> show, but uh, it's been a, a different journey. It's something that I've thoroughly enjoyed. And um, look, it's been a step back from being what you, you know, the hurly-burly of, um, of the football and, and exactly what we do on a daily and weekly level. All right, we'll come on a journey here. It's a bit unconventional at times. We'll see how we go. What are you most looking forward to as we head to the weekend? Well, I think all the talk has been about uh, around the eight. Who is going to take this top eight spot? So for mine, it is the Crows versus Richmond. So whoever wins that, you think, is in a, a very strong position and carrying form in the Crows. They were fantastic last week. They just absolutely decimated uh, the Lions. And, and the Tigers, well, they're heading for seven straight. So And there's uh, Martin there, who's been playing really well, as well as Rewalt. So... Same question back to you, Jared. I, what are you most looking forward I'm to? I'm looking forward to Essendon's response. I think this has been the most fascinating aftermath and the coaching of Bomber Thompson, who made the win, win, win speech with the players, and then he made it publicly as well. And uh, I think the players really responded to that being the public challenge as well as what happened behind closed doors. Now, they play West Coast, who's suddenly hot. Uh, they've fumbled a couple of games, Essendon. There's no margin for error in the Saturday twilight. But there's a good sense of humour to be kept along the way, and that's what Bomber balances perfectly. So this has been released through the club website. It's Bomber at his oddball best. So don't forget to bring your scarf along to the game. It's going to be a beauty. It's going to be a beauty. Um, no doubt Kevin Sheedy started this, and I'm going to continue the legacy. We, uh, we'd like you to bring it, and, and on every goal, um, just whiz it around, you know, like, like Kevin used to do with the old face, you know, the game face on. The competitive man he is. Um, what a beauty. Great man. Great tradition. Bring your scarf. Have a crack. Help us through. See ya. Pressure? What pressure? <laughs> he's been refreshing, hasn't he? Mm. The way he addresses the, the press, it's like he's still talking to his players. Um, he, his honesty in such difficult circumstances throughout the whole year, he's been the perfect person to be able to lead this team through this period of time for that club. All right, it's good solid footy chat tonight, so I, I think I'm in good hands. So let's head into the agenda and the selection news tonight. Uh, unexpected injuries, bold returns, as this is the time of year to put it all on the line. You can't die wondering now. Geelong's changes though this was a couple of the shocks we knew Steve Johnson would miss with a foot injury but Jimmy Bartel's out with a corked thigh and that means Smeds and Buse come in and Vossi you could take the view that in a match which looked tighter than ladder positions might expect is this is a significant swing at selection well when we look at uh, just how tight these sides are and, and we know where they sit on the ladder but we look at current form and their current form suggests they're quite close uh, when you look at the amount of possession they've had the way they kick the football this is really tight so one or two changes here or there can make a significant difference and as you mentioned earlier Carlton well they're looking for a little bit of redemption especially 
especially after the last 15 or 20 seconds of that last match. They're really purposeful at this time of the year, Carlton, and Sam Rowe articulated that last night. And Mick Malthouse gave a pretty good uh, a pretty good thread of that after a Friday night disappointment earlier in the year, beaten at the death by the Cats, as they want back at them. The revenge is never... I don't think you gain anything from revenge. Carlton by a point. Thriller Friday night, Eddie Head Stadium. Boundary throw in. Warnock in front. Wins it down. Catherine's over the football. 40 metres oh. out. Selwood's kicked the goal. The oh. champs had no impact. But when it mattered the most, he rises like a phoenix. Well, I have a history sheet of, or history book of that game, and I'll go back over and find out what we did right, what we did wrong. That we have a role to play, play the role, and the, and the results will look after themselves. But we've got to play that role longer than what we have done. We want, we want to be massively competitive. And Geelong have escaped. What a night! The Cats win and probably bury the Blues. I reckon we really have crossed the Rubicon, and. I feel very confident in saying that we're probably a better side than we played Geelong last time. Now, Malthouse has prided this team on playing its best football against the best company, and the failures have actually been elsewhere. And if they want something out of this late season, then this is the perfect match to go and get something. Gives you momentum. And Mick Malthouse talks about big players playing well in big moments and big games. And, and this is it. And he's, uh, you can see the momentum that's starting to build. You can almost hear the trust that's building and the language that the players are talking now, and they're grabbing this momentum. Judd has signed on uh, for another year, so that gives them a, a real Philip and the way that they feel uh, Thomas is starting to get in some really good form so there's a, there's a real silent confidence about Carlton the way they're going about this second half of the season yes there is a vibe that tomorrow night will be close uh, and perhaps anything short of that might prove disappointing uh, I imagine what will happen on Sunday afternoon will be close in the West as well as two teams from a grand final there's always residual whenever they meet and that's how it will be when Hawthorne and Fremantle square off but there's more in it than that. This is about jockeying for position heading towards September. The Chemist Warehouse changes here as Hawthorne have left nothing to chance. Gunston comes back having trained especially well so he's ahead of schedule and Brian Lake, well if you need the swing man in a game like this it's pointless having him in the VFL so it looks like he'll come straight back in. Ruffhead we know is going to miss with the suspension and Hartung loses his place. Is There's no conservatism with three weeks to go when you're in a share of ladder leading. I think uh, Alistair Clarkson's talked about this before about what's his preference and to be able to play against the very best sides coming in just gives them enormous confidence so you're coming in playing against top four teams I think they would rather no other way and when you come in here and you can test your side you've got your forward in Gunston a real sharpshooter Lake comes back into that team they're starting to get consolidated they're starting to get their team back together when it's been so up in the air for most of the year and Fremantle as Walters is the key inclusion here is for the shape of what the Dockers might be in these first few weeks of September. He's a central figure. Silvani has to play because McFarlane's out and there are long-term um, issues for McFarlane as to whether he'll be able to fight his way back into the team with that calf injury. Mazungu comes back as well, potentially. But Walters, uh, a lot rests with him. It does, the dynamic duo. I think not just only for Walters, but also for Ballantyne. And they just seem to operate so well together. It's uh, Having him missing for most of the year has been a real disappointment for Freeman. And, and Ross has talked about these uh, these two goals and it's been quoted over and over again but how do they get this extra scoring power but when you have one of your key players that's missing from that area it's hard to replicate that intensity over a long period of time so Walter's coming in I'm sure we've just got to give him a little bit of allowance mm. to get his match fitness back but he's a very important inclusion so do you have a view who this is more important for or is it level par in round 21. Oh, I think it has to be for Fremantle. Uh, when you consider where, what they've played against, uh, they've played against some, you know, the bottom half of the ladder. Uh, they've been pressed only a few times. But in terms of form, uh, they would have liked to have got away with that win against Geelong. So there's a great test. They almost got that one. But to build that momentum that they need, they need some healthy bodies. They need their system put in place week after week. That familiarity that you have by playing beside one another coming into finals is just so important. And the absence 
absence of uh, of McFarlane, uh, which looks that looks a desperate blow. I know Ross talks about bringing Silvani in, but Silvani doesn't play when they're at full strength. No, probably not. But at the same time, you can't put players in that are just 80% uh, fit. If there's something that has changed uh, in six or seven years, that if you could play at 90% once upon a time, you can't anymore. And McFarlane has been moving very limited in the last uh, handful of games, at least that I've seen him play. So he's clearly restricted. So having someone who's playing at 90% versus someone who can come in and play and give his absolute physical best and replicate that work ethic that Ross Lyon talks about weekly, can't have a game without effort. We can't put game strategy in place without effort. He says it over and over again. So you've got a player now that you can put in there and expect that effort from. Well, there's a rich rivalry building between Hawthorne and Fremantle and grand finals will do that. There's a great sense of collegiality though between the two coaches, be it for how they played their football and what they want to achieve with their teams. You'll see the full feature of this on Fox Footy's coverage on Sunday night, but a little glimpse with Mike Sheehan. We'd like to get a scalp. We'd like to scalp the Hawthorne Football Club. And hopefully we'll pick a really well-balanced team that's going to go and you know, get into a footy war with, with Hawthorne. It's going to be on. Head to head with Al, you're seven, three and one draw. Seven Clarks and three line and one draw. I'd rather be Al. <laughs> apart, from, yeah, apart from the fact that he's got good footy teams, why is he difficult to coach against? Oh, because he's got a strong signature of, of how they play. Um, clearly really well drilled situation. I can go back to last year's grand final. We got a run on and they adjusted pretty quickly, you know, able to get the support for the defence and you know, send it down and, and it was done. You know, with, um, uh, but clearly strong signature, strong, you know, and their teams play all, all phases of the ball really well. Yeah, I think well. it hadn't been too strong against the Cats. <laughs> well, the a bit Cats smudgy that day. Things at them, you know? <laughs> so, whereas our, probably our record, the Dockers and, had been pretty good against the... Um, di your different game styles bring different things that you can deal with. You know? Clark, I've said three goes and hasn't won one yet. Will you sort of... Hope he gets it this year. <laughs> hope, hope, hope. <laughs> <laughs> As he said earlier on, and it, it goes, it goes the same thing with uh, um, when when you're a player. You, know, you might be good mates off the field, um, and I think that goes back to your. Uh, your backyard days when you were a kid, you used to fight like hell with your brothers, mm. you know. Mm. Um, and that's that's the way the game should be, in a sense, is that there's very, very healthy respect off it. But when it comes time that the siren's blown and you're into a game of footy, as Ross indicated before, you're going to be fighting like all buggery for his Fremantle boys, and I'm going to be doing the same for, for Hawthorne. And then uh, post-game, we'd like to be able to shake each other's hand and say, well done to one or the other, and um, see you next time. So more of that on Sunday night in the lead up to the Twilight match. On the Hawthorne side of things and lingering injuries at this time of year can bring an awful lot undone. And that's where Sewell Rioli finds himself as the update out of Hawthorne. It's not a setback, it's just not the progression that they were hoping for. Regular surveillance scans have shown his injury has been steadily improving. However, recent scans show the tendon healing process has slowed a little. That's from Chris Fagan. Is the Hawks are leaning to four weeks and you only have to count that qualifying final weekend that he misses if Hawthorne wins its preliminary final weekend. Still Rioli's on a hair trigger. Oh, it's tight. Cannot afford any setbacks whatsoever. Otherwise, he'll play no impact in the finals whatsoever. So you can come in first up for a prelim? Oh, I think he can. But and you can't come in first up for a grand, grand final. Grand final. Um, we've seen that circumstances and it says over and over again you've got to take fit players in there. So if they just give him that little bit more time, they just can't afford any recurrence whatsoever. He's clearly got history, so they'll be very careful with him. OK, the other key changes, and there are a couple of surprises here as well on the injury front. So the outs is Carlisle came up as an out for Essendon with a back injury. Collingwood made the changes. Young and White were both omitted and Dwyer has a hamstring. Wood from the Bulldogs with a hand and he won't play again this year. Ellis with the shoulder. Now McGlynn who's been in rich form with the Swans, he's got a calf injury. Mm. And again, you just count the weeks to the start of the finals. Reece Shaw misses with an ankle. Billings misses for St Kilda. Thomas with the knee. Otten um, uh, with the knee as well and, uh, and Lynch with the neck injury. But McGlynn and Shaw, it, it's not sudden death for this week because they play St Kilda, not to be disrespectful, but what does it mean, a calf injury for McGlynn? Not good, especially when we 
take him back to the scenario where he missed the last grand final. So you can see the, the rich vein of form that he's in at the moment. He's playing so well. He had so much run and dash. He'll be very careful because there's one thing that he will have is an eye on the prize. If there's one determined player that wants to win that grand final, it's McGlynn. And in such an important game for Essendon, Carlisle with a back injury. So their forward line doesn't have great structure as it is. So Ambrose is on the quick return from a broken jaw. He comes back into the side. But that's Ambrose and Danaher as your key forwards. Well, it'll be interesting to see what structure ends up happening, especially with uh, with Hurley. Uh, he's had fleeting moments uh, down back, and that's going pretty solid for them. But uh, to miss him, he's been the absolute uh, rich form. He's been absolutely fantastic. I know he had a, a quiet one last week, but uh, he's been in superb form. Look, unpredictability could have an impact here. Yep. Uh, the, having the multiple goal kickers, uh, they haven't kicked a lot of goals, so the challenge will be for them. Can they kick the winning score that's required to get them the result? OK, they get Watson back here. He missed eight matches. They went four and four through that split, the Bombers, and Hibbard comes back as well. So Swan is back for Collingwood, Ball and Grundy, so they bolster up the pies as they face the Lions. Wells is in for North, so this is the finishing touches to the Kangaroos side, and he'll face a Bulldogs team that's picked John Syracuse for the time being. Dixon is in for the uh, Suns. White in for Port Adelaide with the running power. Grimes and Salem back for the Demons, and Podsy Adley had the week off for the Crows. Um, Collingwood's? is they've used up all their margin for error. Uh, Swan, he's on notice from Buckley to redeem his season. And even Ball as well, who Bucks didn't shy away from the fact that his last month has not been all that they would have hoped. And not that he would be communicating this message, but Bucks in the back of his mind would realise that the next two games are Brisbane and you've got GWS. So not that you want to underestimate any team, but we're not sitting in the top four and certainly the Lions have shown their capability in being able to knock off uh, sides. But it's a chance for them to be able to get some form back. It's also to get players some fitness back. So some really key inclusions there. What does experience tell you Daniel Wells would be capable of? Three months out, a week back through the VFL, not a full game, ready to go, has to play now really with three to go ahead of the finals. What impact is it realistic to suggest he could have? Wouldn't be surprised whether he's donning the vest. Uh, to come back and just meet that intensity, I think it's a fantastic way just to be able to introduce players who have spent a long time out, the way to manage them, just to get that intensity hit. He would have trained very hard. Uh, they certainly wouldn't put him out there if he was under risk whatsoever, but he's had a very long preparation. Uh, we thought he wasn't going to come back, but this is uh, they've got to throw it all out there now, the Kangaroos. It's a big game for them. All right, let's focus in on uh, the game you're most looking forward to and head to Adelaide, and he's invited us into his lounge room, or at least we've muscled our way there. Sam Jacobs, he's surely the all-Australian ruckman, and he's with us on AFL 360. Sam, thanks for your time. No worries, boys. Thanks for having me. We are thoroughly looking forward to what's to come on Saturday nights. Uh, what do you think is at stake here for the Crows as the Red Hot Tigers come your way? Yeah, there is plenty. Obviously, it's a game we're really looking forward to. And, um, you know, they're the form team of the competition at the moment with six wins in a row. And um, we know previously Richmond are a real confidence team. And, and what they've been able to do over the last six weeks has been really good. They are, they're number one in uh, contested ball and clearances. And it's something we pride ourselves on. So um, it'll be a very interesting game. What's your recovery been like, Sam, the whole team, after the heat of Brisbane and the, uh, the issue that Brenton Sanderson made out of that? Yeah, it has been. It's been a pretty light week. Um, you know, obviously that was compounded with losing uh, Andy Eitan and also Tom Lynch. So uh, we've had a pretty light week, but, um, you know, we did a bit Tuesday to try and get moving a bit earlier in the week and, and we had a really good blowout at, at the main session today. So uh, come Saturday night, uh, we'll be cherry ripe to go. It is unseasonal to play in that heat at this time of year coming out of Adelaide. Did it take a physical toll on you personally? Yeah, it did. Um, yeah, I... I had a shot at goal late in the game and it's probably the first time I've cramped um, at all this year. So it was um, obviously pretty hard conditions, but it's sort of hard to get a gauge because it's probably the first time this year we've lost two players as well. So, um, you know, obviously rotations were down and I think I only had one rotation in the second half. So um, it did take its toll near the end of the game. But um, in saying that, we were able to kick, I think it was eight goals in the last 12 minutes. So... Um, you know, we're able to really push on and finish the game off. And Sam, what about your own form? You've been in fantastic form. I had a great clash with Martin last week. Is this the first year you'll break into the All-Australian team? <laughs> 
Pleasure I'll break into it. Yep. <laughs> nah, I don't know about that, Vossi. I'll uh, just worry about worry about trying to get the Crows in the finals first. And what about your, one of your other ruckmen you're going to play against this week? Uh, Richmond's Ivan Marich. He's been in fantastic form since his return, so that's going to be a key duel. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, obviously, I, I had a year with Ivan at the Crows, and I know how competitive he is, and um, you know how, how how he plays his footy. He really makes blows, uh, dra really drags blokes along with him. So, um, you know, I've been been reading a bit about Richmond in the past, and you hear blokes like Cochin and um, you know Delity on blokes like this, and they talk about how valuable um, he is as a, as a leader. And um, so, it's going to be really important for me to not only match his aggression, um, but also to you know to really try and get on top of him and give our midfielders first use. Sam, when you are playing with well, and let's not be silly about it, you are playing well. Do you have a, a sense of being in really good form when you go out on the field? Yeah, I do. I feel like this year I've been really consistent in my, my output as well. So um, it's probably, you know, I feel my ruck works at a standard now where it's at a pretty good level consistently, but it's, it's about impacting the game around the ground, and that's probably where I've seen my biggest improvement this year is, is not only, um, you know, making sure I'm rucking well, and it's, it's also, uh, you know, taking marks around the ground and, and having a bit more of an impact. So when it comes to your ruck work, what's the number one thing that you like to meet in a match? Uh, you just got to be, got to be, uh, you know, ready for change every week. There's obviously so many different types of ruckmen. I mean, uh, last week I went against Nick Natanui and, and Scott Lysett in the same game, and then I was against Stefan Martin. So, um, you know, each ruckman's got their different strengths, and you know, I'll, I'll work to a plan. And you know, overall, I still try and worry about what I'm doing, but you sort of have to respect what they do and what their strengths are. And we talked about the All Australian uh, form that you're in at the moment. Do you think that though the next stage for you as a ruckman is being able to push forward and kick goals? You did that last week against Brisbane. Can we expect more of that? Yeah, I'd like to think so. Um, you know, I get I get good, well supported from Josh Jenkins, who who's really dangerous up forward as well. But it's important for me, especially getting near the end of the year. I've I've been able to play every game, and I've been up around sort of you know 90 percent playing playing time every week. So it's important for me to not only make sure I get um, you know my my breaks off the field, but also to get forward. And um, you know, I feel I'm I feel I'm able enough now to be able to actually compete up forward and give us another target. OK, there's been a bit of up and down about the Crows right throughout the year. You're in the eight now and possession is nine-tenths of the law. Do you expect the Crows to play finals from here? Yeah, I'd like to think so, Jared. Um, you know, that's something we, we obviously aim at at the start of the year and it's an expectation we have as a group as well. So, um, like you said, we're in a good position at the moment and um, another important game against Richmond uh, this week who's also really pushing for a final spot. And um, like you mentioned, it's been a really up and down year. And uh, two weeks ago, we had another chance to consolidate and we weren't able to do that against West Coast after starting so well. So, um, we're under no illusions that, you know, there's teams that want our spot and we have to do our best to, to hold on to it. It's a great squeeze, but you're in a good place. So good luck with it, Sam, and thanks for joining us. Thanks, boys. Cheers for having me. Sam Jacobs with us on 360. Is he the All-Australian Ruckman? I think so. He's been in fantastic form. The next stage for him, I think, is to be able to push forward a little bit more and kick a few more goals. If we use that Dean Cox model where he's able to ruck, then push forward, kick his goals, that's uh, when you're going very well as a Ruckman. So Marich is in such good form, and so is Jacobs. Oh. And the games are always won in the midfield. How significant is the duel of the two big men to set up their mids? Really significant. And the Ruckman sometimes get overplayed, but they also get underplayed at times and they can give a real physical presence around the ground. So um, just having the two ruckmen being able to just butt heads for a bit and be able to get those contests side to side, but give first use to their midfielders. And every midfielder wants that. If you can get proactive around those stoppages, it just gives you that go forward that you need and just gets on the upper hand. All right, more on the round to come shortly. But the other key story of the day uh, revolves around the discussion we were having last night. Who will be bold at the end of the season? Who will proactively improve their list and grab the player that they need. The story that broke this morning surrounded a potential Bulldogs raid on Jonathan Patton, which was listed at 900,000. Is we would believe that this is a five million five-year potential offer for Patton, maybe at the end of next year. Is honestly, I'll be disappointed if the Bulldogs haven't done this. This is the perfect move for them, whether it comes off or not. And of course, in these moments, the coach will be coy.
Oh, it's good to read over breakfast and it's speculative and uh, we don't talk about list decisions or contracts and we just talk about footy and we've got three games to play. That sort of figure is exactly what the Bulldogs should be looking for. I think they have to be aggressive. And sometimes it doesn't hurt just to say to your fans that we're players here. We're serious about building our football club. We have a young group that's coming through. We've got this emerging midfield that's really exciting. We've got rising stars that are coming up from everywhere. But we understand and we appreciate that one of our holes is our key position player. So if you've only been playing 95% of the salary cap for a numerous amount of years, here's your chance to put your hand in your pocket and spend the cash and try and find that player. And if it doesn't work, so what? But sometimes when you shake, shake the apple mm -hmm. tree, one falls out. And it might not necessarily be pattern but it could be someone else because if the player managers know they're out shopping, the player managers will start coming knocking on the door. And all of a sudden, something can eventuate out of nothing. So I think it's a good play by the Bulldogs. For the giant side of things, I think the answer was never, ever, ever, ever. And we can't control what the outside world um, you know, going to write about our players. What we can control is uh, the environment we create at this footy club. And John's gone on record a number of times. <laughs> Um, that he's happy at this footy club, he's happy living in Sydney, he loves the footy club, he's built up some really good strong relationships with his teammates, his coaches, um, the people involved at this footy club and, uh, and I take our players on face value and, uh, and you know when John says that then that's all I'm worried about and uh, the speculation that's going to grow, um, you know that'll, um, as I said we can't control that but, uh, but we're, um, you know, we're, we're making sure that our boys are you know, growing up in a really really good environment, a great culture and we think we're achieving that. There's there's always going to be speculation um, of players, uh, you know, getting poached from other footy clubs. I mean, that's the that's the AFL these days. I mean, there's a lot of movement from players these days. So, but we're really confident that uh, a lot of these boys will put pen to paper shortly. I'm not too sure, mate. Like, I've got a whole other 16 more months on my contract, so uh, I'm not too sure. I've barely spoken to my manager uh, lately. So, yeah, like I said, it's it's sort of in one ear out the other, and I just want to play football. So we'll see. It's fight night, Vossi. You might be the first man in that chair to hold his own on fight night. <laughs> I fancy you've probably got history with Barry Hall and Cameron Mooney as well. We might explore all of that next, as well as look into what's to come in round 21. Still the highlight was thrusting into the arms before I'd expect the official. I haven't checked the roster. I hope Sandy's back at the SCG for 21 years <laughs> since. He has to be now, doesn't he? <laughs> yes. Barry Hall, welcome. Hello, boys. Cameron Mooney, good day. Hello, gentlemen. Yes. Uh, God, you just love hearing Sandy's voice now. Just takes <laughs> it back. And uh, Lewis Roberts Thompson called it a day today, Baz. Uh, he's one of four men who were part of the 2005 and the 2012 Premiership. Goods, Bolton, O'Keefe, LRT. It's a pretty good career. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good career for him. Look, he's, he's limited talent, talent wise, there's no doubt about that. He'd be the first to admit that. But uh, for what he's got out of himself, and it's, it's a really good story in terms of the Sydney. Um, the AFL coming to the Sydney, he was a rugby league player in a private school. Uh, he made the switch and you know, really made a decision in the end that he wanted to play AFL football. And I'm just glad for his sake and then the Sydney Swan sake that it worked out for him. Um, fantastic career, as you said, 170 odd games, uh, two premierships, and two premierships he really contributed to. Mm. Um, he played well in both of them. The 2012 one really rings, rings true to me. Just his physicality, not so many possessions or anything, but just his physicality and some important little touches here and there uh, can be pretty proud of his career. All right, we want a secret or two after we hear from him as he retired. I didn't really see my career sort of unfolding as it did and, and lasting as long as, as what it did, but um, it certainly has been a, a, a very exciting journey. Uh, plenty of highs and plenty of lows and 
and we play footy initially because we enjoy it and um, and throughout my career I've, I've really enjoyed my footy and my time at the Swans and, and look to be a part of um, two premierships and to reach that, uh, that, that pinnacle of success um, were the highlights um, in my career. Uh, look, I think you learn um, pretty quickly what's required at the top level. Um, you need the, the toughness and the, the resilience and, and, and Holly was great. He, he taught me that. He also taught me a lot about um, cars and, and tattoos and, uh, <laughs> and how to enjoy beer. <laughs> Clearly guilty as charged. Yeah, I, I taught him how to have a beer, that's for sure. Um, we had a good time, but we worked hard up in Sydney. Um, that's a perfect place to play AFL football. But I took Louis under my wing. He was a, wanted to be a, a key defender. Uh, a lot to learn, obviously, but um, we did a lot of one-on-one -on -one work, a lot of body work, and uh, as I said, it uh, ventured out to the, the pubs afterwards sometimes. But he's a really good fellow, as I said. He'd be really proud of what he'd achieved, and uh, it's a really good story for Sydney and, and the Sydney Footy Club. Was he the coach's whipping boy Baz or was he loved because of the roles that he did for his team oh, he, he was more loved than uh, a whipping boy and look as I said I think we realized that the ability he had but he, he was a real competitor uh, anything he did he did 100% um, and as I said he really contributed like there wasn't too many um, wasn't too many contests where he shirked the issue at all so that's probably the most underrated thing I'd, I could say about Lewis Roberts Thompson is his physicality he was really underrated in that area he was played on him yeah, played on him a handful of times actually he was he was, he was a bit of a pest as well one of those guys would be always nicking at you or stepping on your toes and because uh, he obviously had to do those things because of his limited ability but loved I shouldn't say love playing on because we used to belt the crap out of each other. <laughs> <laughs> he whacked me in the back of the head a few times and it was good fun, but uh, he is. He's a ripping bloke. He's an absolute ripping fella. And I reckon the three grand finals, I reckon he played well in all three. Yeah, he, did. Mm. He, was, yep. he was a big game player in the end, which is probably one of the best things you can say about him. Okay. Just before we delve on with the rest of it, is there any issues to work through between the three of you? It's the first time we've gathered you together? No, the only uh, the last time I was uh, this close to Baz, we were rooming together <laughs> at the All Australian Island. So that was an interesting experience. I think it was about 3 a.m. of there where Baz uh, came in and gate crashed there at one stage. Yeah, and we did. We had a party, and uh, Vossi wasn't aware of it at that stage. <laughs> 3 o'clock, we had a party in our room, and um, all of a sudden we had 20 players in there. And yeah. um, we actually missed training the next morning because uh, we had a wake up call. And they were wrestling and carrying on like uh, you know mature adults we were, and knocked the phone off, so we didn't get the wake-up call. And we slept in, so I had to put my hand up for that and accept responsibility. Okay, uh, milestones for the weekend. Uh, Ryan Griffin's playing his 200th game, the Western Bulldogs captain, as the Dogs try to cause the upset against the Kangaroos. It took me a few years to realise how hard I had to train. Um, I sort of come in, sort of a careless kid, and um, you know my training standards probably weren't there for the first few years. And I had a lot of good guys around me, like Scotty West and Luke Darcy, that um, really trained me up well. And I think after being in the system for four or five years, I realised that I had to, to lift my standard, and that's when I started to play better footy. There's captains who are sort of strong and firm and and make great speeches, and there's Ryan, who's uh, they all love him as a like a big brother and a, I wouldn't say fatherly figure, but it will be in soon. In another couple of years, it'll be a fatherly type influence and they know that he cares for them deeply and they're important to him. So he's a quiet achiever and Bob Murphy wrote about him in The Age today uh, about his skipper. So uh, Macca says there's all sorts of captains and he's in the, uh, he's in the more reserved. Yeah, he is. Uh, and he's growing into the role, no question about it. He'll, he'll become more vocal as he becomes more confident. Vossi, you know what it's like when you first take over. Um, it's very hard sometimes to be that vocal person if you're not that naturally. Uh, and it is something he will have to grow into and he is slowly getting there. But it'll take a little bit of time but he is a person that leads by his actions on the footy field more than anything. It seems like a player that's just grown into every role he's been asked mm. to be given. We talk about uh, or he's touched on his work rate that he had to learn. He didn't have it necessarily yeah. at the start of his career and now he's been able to evolve himself into a leader so it's a fair transition as a player to be able to come from a player who didn't understand what it took to now leading the football club. Well, I think, he's, I think in the article the first the first thing he said to Bob Murphy on having a shower and Bob played 80 games and he said so how many games have you played mate? So <laughs> He had, no, he had no idea about footy whatsoever. and He's just a, a country lad. Uh, he's probably got the best uh, dance to get out of trouble mm -hmm. that I've seen in a long, long time. The way he can step around and get out. Uh, yeah, look, he is. He's an elite. 
elite midfielder. He's, he's also changed the way he plays. When he first started, he was, a, he was an uncontested player. Get out and run mm -hmm. out in the space. We knew what speed he had. But now with him getting tagged, he's, he's a real contested boost and he loves it. He well, probably doesn't like it, but he, yeah. he's moulded his game around it. So to change a game like that, it's not an easy thing to do. Jake Stringer got the rising star nod this week and he spoke about the influence and the work that you've been doing with him or he's been doing with you. What do you see in Jake? What can he become? Uh, look, I think, I think more of the point. I think Shannon Grant's probably done the greatest work with him and Ashley Hanson as well. But look, I see this guy in, in the coming. I mean, look at the brute strength here. We've spoken to this off air, Vossi. His brute strength is amazing. Uh, the way he can fend, his quickness, even though he looks a little bit slow, he is very quick off the mark. He's got a great pair of hands. He's going to be, he is aggressive and he'll be a lot more aggressive when he gets more confident with his ability and he knows how the, you know, how the game's played. You know, you never want to put a tag on a guy. But, you know, he's a, a Rusciuto type who will go into the midfield when he gets a bigger engine. Uh, we see the brute strength around stoppages. He, he breaks away and then he can go forward and kick goals as he's done over the last, you know, three or four weeks where he's kicked like 16 goals or something. So he's, he's going to be a terrific player for the Dogs. How, how quick is he? Because, as you mm. said, he doesn't look like he's deceivingly quick. Mm. He looks like he's just... Uh, well, he broke his leg a couple of years ago. And this is what you were talking about. Because you were looking at him, weren't you, yeah. at Brisbane? 17-year-old uh, draft. Yeah. He broke yeah. his leg and I think he fell off the radar a little bit um, and they took a punt on him the dogs and they, they believe that they could work through his leg problems and they start and they have they really have and like I said now it is just about fitness once he gets that real base up and going and he can run out games through the midfield between he and Bontem Pelly in the next couple of years swapping on ball forward you know it's, it's going to be scary well presuming his partner doesn't have the baby on Sunday he's going to be part of a team <laughs> <laughs> that could unsettle yeah, she's under a little bit of pressure just to either <laughs> go early or just hold on for another 24 hours but uh yeah, it's exciting for him. He's only young. They're both very young, obviously, but a uh, little bub on the way, which will, will be absolutely fantastic for him. So can they trouble North Melbourne, the Bulldogs? Absolutely, they can. Uh, I think this is a real danger game for North. Uh, the Dogs, what you get from the Dogs is you, they're going to turn up and play, and, and they've been doing that over the last couple of months. They mightn't have got the results. Uh, they might fall away for a, a quarter or two or, or something like that, but their ability to turn up and play hard, contested footy will be a non-negotiable. So these guys have to be on their, on their game. <laughs> We've seen them drop games against sides who are lower than them. Uh, and it's such a pressure game for them. With Adelaide, Essendon and Collingwood, we all assume will probably win this week or could win this week. All of a sudden, they're back down to nearly dropping out of the eight. So it's a much, very important game for them. That's a, that's a challenge for me for North Melbourne is to put four quarters together and, and against sides that they should beat. We look at later position, this is a, a game they should win. I know the dogs have been in good form, but uh, just from the weekend, the first half was, was terrible. And they come out, they got a bit of a break and the third quarter they kicked eight goals. So you can't do that against good sides. Mm. Going into a final series, you want to be putting four quarter performances together. Uh, this is a pretty important task for him. Moons, is there any reason to be worried about Steve Johnson beyond just missing Friday night with the, what looks Are like a mystery foot Are you talking just the ailment? foot? No, I haven't yeah. even spoken to him. Um, he's not returning my text message. <laughs> <laughs> he's off me at the minute. Um, look, I, so I don't know what the story is with the foot. I was as surprised as anybody when I saw him on the crutches. Uh, this is funny because this is down Packington Street, which is one of the main streets of Geelong, and how they found out he was there, I think he's thrown out a bit of a text. You know, here I am <laughs> trying, to get, trying to get a little bit of attention. Because no, I would have known he was there otherwise. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do, you think, do you think you didn't know the country? Right? <laughs> but uh, look, as far as the foot injury, I have no idea. Uh, the, problem, the biggest concern now is just his temperament on the field. And that's, that's the main thing that he needs to start looking after a little bit. Because if he, he's just one little silly incident away from missing a, a very important game come finals time. How do you address that as a playing group though? Because he's clearly successful at what he's done, how he's gone about it. He's lived on the edge and everyone's talked about how competitive he is and he sledges out on the football field and that's just the way that Steve is. But as a, as a leadership group, how do you go to Steve and say, listen, mate, we know that that's what makes you good, mm. but it's also going to, it might just cost us at the wrong time. Well, it's, it's, it's a tough one. I mean, you know this, Baz. It's, I, I found with, with mine, when I went on a really stupid period, it was just the frustration of what was going on around me and we were having a really bad season. Now, I don't know if John is frustrated or if he should be frustrated about anything, but to me, they're just a little frustration of things. Of Maybe it's the, the close checking and he's just getting annoyed with it. But he has to be mentally strong to just bite his lip and just get through it. Mm. Otherwise, he, he is going to cost... 
himself and probably the team come final sign if he doesn't pull it in. OK, you'll both be on the Gold Coast to see Port Adelaide. Are you seeing glimmers that they're getting back? Well, I am. Uh, just being able to see their contested numbers has been a real issue for them over the last, uh, the last six weeks. Yeah. Um, I think the game on the weekend was a significant difference, Baz. Uh, and you know you've got to get that effort back before the skill returns. They run tidy, they didn't finish, they looked ordinary at times, but you've got to get that effort back, that contested run, before the skills start to come back. Well, they looked tired to me. I was down at ground level and I've seen the two sides and Carlton's intensity around the footy was far greater than, than the Gold Coast Suns. And it was just about effort for me. And it was from that was from the, from the outset, from the first quarter, and the numbers just rolled on and, and contested the ball. They lost again, so mm -hmm. it's pretty basic. They've just got to strip it back again. Mm -hmm. All right, now <laughs> bum tapping is non-discriminatory. It turns out. I don't know if you saw the club last night, but Jean Murphy, God bless her, in her 90s, was going to give it a go. Nana loves all the boys in Collingwood, but Swanee is definitely her little favourite. She has a real soft spot for him. And she said to me that if she ever gets a chance to meet Swanee, she just wants to give him a little tap on the bum. <laughs> but it takes nerve to do this, Cam. You've got to be Did strong, Jane. Have nerve? You've got to be strong. See it here. Oh, she wanted um, to. Come on, Jane. Uh, she on. thought about it. No, she, <laughs> she nerved up, Jane. <laughs> it's not like oh, it's man. a backside you can't miss either this one. I thought Jane was a big game player. Though. <laughs> Shadow bump tapping only. But, uh, good on you, Jane. Uppercut to finish. Yeah, uppercut. Well, who gonna, else is that up? Yeah, it's got to be one of our own. Um, Obviously the absence, we, we love having Yuri Vossi, but we've got to whack the bloke who's not here, Mark Robinson. What does he talk about week in and week out? Effort and intensity and all <laughs> the rest of it. gets excited. <laughs> Jerry, he's got to have effort. He's got to have this. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> uh, Jesus. Oh, God, Dicko in the room. <laughs> he's, he's, had, he's had a week off with the sniffles. <laughs> <laughs> well, the only good that's become of this is this room actually smells nice now. But get off the couch, you big mess, <laughs> and get back to work. <laughs> Oh, that's oh, a really on your cool way, on your way, and you've <laughs> left us with something to think about. Uh, next, Mark Bosnich is going to join us for the weekend forecast, not just the AFL weekend, but the start of the EPL, and honestly, any excuse to get Bozzer on. Saturday night on Fox Footy is a high stakes evening. It begins with the pageantry of Essendon and West Coast with the Bombers fans being urged to continue the tradition. Get out there with the scarves. And then Adelaide and Richmond. All oh, the finals come just that little bit early. The Tigers looking for seven in a row and the Crows looking to become dependable and defend their position. And then to the MCG where Collingwood's margin for error has completely dried up and nothing short of a win over the Lions is acceptable with some key players on the return headlined by Dane Swan. That's what lies ahead and as if that's not enough on Saturday night it's the beginning of the new EPL season. 9.30 Manchester United and Swansea begins us. We only need this much reason to bring in Mark Bosnich and this is more than enough reason. Bozza, welcome to AFL 360. Good evening Jared. how are you going Vossi? Great show by the way. Now let's start with the news of the week, the International Champions Cup. Uh, which which has caused a stir between the codes, but honestly, this seems to be one of those moments where the sport fan in everyone is going to be richly rewarded if this does happen. Well, I think you're exactly right. And, and Melbourne, uh, you have to say, has been one of the sporting capitals of the world. And the Australian sporting public in general deserve the best. We punch above our weight at the Olympic Games. Um, we, we produce fantastic athletes. And any club side really coming down here, football-wise anyway, and I said this to somebody a couple of years ago, you've got to bring the best out. With you know, Fox TV, satellite television, we can get any game in the world pretty much at any time. So if you're going to have people in the flesh, let's see the, let have the Australian public make sure that they are getting the very best and that's what's been uh, proposed forward for this tournament uh, and hopefully it will all come off. So will Melbourne get the best bozzer? Because these are the shots from Michigan mm. when Manchester United played Real Madrid and yeah. there was 109,000 people there because when you bring the best together, you simply can't stay away. No, you can't and, and kudos must go to the 
the FFA as well. So I think that the, the penny dropped with them. I think after I was about two or three years ago, um, when a club side came down to Melbourne, I can't recall who exactly was. And I remember having a conversation with somebody and saying that. And last year we saw when Manchester United and Liverpool came down, it was absolutely fantastic when Liverpool supporters sang "You Never Walk Alone" at the MCG, 95,000 people. It put the hairs of my head back up my neck. It was it was unbelievable. So this year we've just had Juventus, and hopefully, like I said, you, it's very difficult in sport to make promises as we know things can happen but the best teams will definitely come down okay the shape of the season to come man city is there any getting past them I think there is. Uh, it's much, much more difficult, uh, and Vossi would say, to defend a title than it is to win it in the first place. Uh, they haven't strengthened, you know, across the board. They've got the boy Mangala uh, from Porto, the French international, to come into defence. Uh, Fernando, the Brazilian midfielder. But I always believe that when they lose Aguero and their gun player up front, their striker, um, they're a little bit flimsy. And I think Chelsea can pip them this season. And what about Man United? you think the new coach will make a massive difference to them next year, perhaps into the top four? I think they will, Vossi. And, and Luis van Gaal is the type of manager they perhaps should have got in the first place. And uh, he's had a phenomenal record in his time with, with AX, Barcelona and Bayern Munich. And he just took Holland mm. to third place in the World Cup in Brazil, as we just saw. And the six pre-season games, no defeats. And he'll bring a different aura. And, and it's funny because, you know, Mourinho was underneath him when he was at Barcelona. He's got a lot of Pep Guardiola played underneath him at Barcelona as well. He's got a fantastic pedigree and he knows his football inside out. I I think he will propel or help propel Manchester United into the top four this season. Now, Bozo, I know it was a tough call to overlook you for Derm and for Dunstall <laughs> and for Vossi during the week, but we want you to play the weekend forecast with us. So you lead yes. us off and give us a sure thing for the weekend. Oh, well, my sure thing, because I'm a Hawthorne supporter, and as you just mentioned, I'm devastated that uh, Dunstall or Derm is not on here, is uh, Hawthorne to beat Frio, uh, replay of the grand final last season, and I think Hawthorne are a sure thing. Bossy, your sure thing? Rob will be back Monday. Oh. After Bazza gave him a spray, he has to come back Monday, no matter how bad he is, because that was one of the all-time best sprays. Any self-respecting human being has to leave the house after that. Port Adelaide's my sure thing. They've got to put themselves back on track. They've got to go to Gold Coast and get it done, and I'm sure they will. Most at stake, Bozza. Uh, Richmond, uh, six straight. Uh, they're on a wonderful run. Uh, massive game this weekend with three games to go against Adelaide. Win this game, puts them on 40 points, uh, probably into the top eight. So I think the most at stake is that when you go on a run like this, it, it'd be a shame sitting at the end of the season watching the finals go on saying, why couldn't we just go on a little bit further and we'll be playing? Your most at stake, Bossy? Well, I think it's Port Adelaide. Uh, when you start to look at their form, they're over the hump. I believe that they are, but uh, they've still got to get the wins on the board, so they just have to win this game. I think it's North Melbourne uh, for the reasons that Moon's just said. It, a little stumble here, and all of a sudden they're right back in the rat race, and there are no guarantees there. So they've got to keep themselves with the buffer that they've built up, and I think the dogs will trouble them. Mm. A, a, a doomsday scenario, Bozza. Uh, for me, it's, uh, I, and I read this while I was away, so I've just got back uh, from Europe, it would be the equalisation policy. Um, I, I can't understand why you would take away incentive from, from any club and any sporting organisation to do well. And that's what it's going to do, in my opinion. If I buy a membership, for example, for Hawthorne, I'm buying a membership and putting my money towards Hawthorne so they can go out and get the best talent possible uh, and to get the best facilities possible, everything best for Hawthorne. I would hate to think, and remember, AFL, for so long, has prided itself on the trial tribalism that it has, you know, you, you have a team not just for Christmas, for life. Um, I started supporting Hawthorne <laughs> in the 80s and, and, I, would, and I, would, I would really dislike greatly if I knew that my money towards that membership was going to go and help propel or to prop up another side. I'll see. That might be a popular view, but uh, I think the doomsday for me is Walters comes back and gets injured. Mm. Fremantle just can't afford that. Boz, in my doomsday, I'm a bit worried that Liverpool's lost its bite, mate. <laughs> very good. Very, very good. I'm not good. sure very I can good. have them without Suarez. Yeah, well, they're playing Southampton on the weekend, so it'll be funny to see it be like Southampton A playing Southampton B. <laughs> <laughs> Great to have you with us, Sponsor. Enjoy the EPL Fantastic season. to be here. Thank you very much, guys. Okay, the EPL starts on Fox Sports on Saturday night. Mark Bosnich, our guest for the weekend forecast. Tomorrow night, this time, it's Carlton and Geelong. The best of the analysis, the pre-match, the halftime and the post-match here on Fox Footy.
Alistair Clarkson's coming in on Monday. Is he really? Yeah, he's got a little challenge for you. A bit of a health challenge. I've already had my prostate examined. <laughs> We're pretty keen on catching up with mm, Robbo tonight. Good luck. But uh, <laughs> the, the thought of him being more healthy has made him sick. Where's Robbo? <laughs> Yeah. Is he sunny crust bread or is it, can we still just go on? <laughs> Would you rather be Robbo or the Bubble Boy? Oh, the Bubble Boy. I don't even know who the Bubble Boy is. <laughs> I just don't want to be Robbo. It's as simple as that. You're better looking than Robbo. <laughs> That's not a... <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, I hope you got you picked beautifully. Oh, that's good. They turn on you. They turn on you in here really quickly. <laughs> you know? Every player would pay the, the five grand before they'd, they'd miss a week of football. What would your wife um, say? A lot of boys would probably then miss the week. <laughs> <laughs> Why should a player just keep chipping in? It just comes straight back to the dollar for you, doesn't it? Well, it's got to. You'd have no money left, mate, if they had fines. <laughs> no, You'd be destitute. I'll tell you right now, if you go out to his car, you'll find five grand in the ashtray. <laughs> I'm playing for the love of the game here, that's about it. <laughs> love of the game. That's beautiful. I'm familiar with those contracts, by the way. I think the umpire lost him when he said that he clunked it. <laughs> so I'm checking my super coach scores. I put a tea towel over the top of my screen. I'm serious. I've got things everywhere. I don't answer the phone. <laughs> Uh, gone but not forgotten. Hey, Vossi, just before you leave, the connection that people are making with the prospects in the recruit? Been really surprising. Yep. And that's uh, even outside of my own household, which has been quite <laughs> amazing. But people barracking for players. So <laughs> it's uh, very much like club land. It's a little microcosm of the way we follow <laughs> it football. Is, it Great is. Great to have you here, Vossi. Thanks, Jared. Enjoy Thanks your weekend pleasure. of footy. All right, there's so much to be determined and there'll be plenty to discuss on Monday where, God willing, Robbo will return. <laughs> See you then.